Hey, Jeff Jantz here at Jantzer Studios, and today I'm inside of our UFO set. Or am I? We've actually been shooting a lot of stuff on green screen lately for our Art on Earth project. And this is our brand new set. We're coming out with a new video, so make sure you check out our Art on Earth YouTube channel so you'll be the first to see all those really great videos. But today, I wanted to show you how we made this set. This is actually shot on a green screen. See? We've been shooting a lot of stuff on green screen lately. Greetings, Earthlings. I am Zara. And I'm Blip. We aren't from around here. We came to Earth for a very serious mission. It's really great to shoot on a green screen because then you can build these sets on a small scale or you can use stock footage if you want to use stock footage. But I think it's much more fun to build your own set and miniature and that way you're the only one in the world who has this set and you can make it so it suits your needs. So I'm going to show you how I built this set with just a few things around the house and my 3D printer. So let's get started right now. Whenever I'm designing something I always like to just start with a good old-fashioned pencil and paper. I'm designing this to complement the UFO table that I built. If you want to check out that video, click the link above. And this is pretty much how I envisioned it. Now I'm going to go into Tinkercad and design the things that I want to 3D print in there. If you don't have a 3D printer, I'm sure that you can find ways to make things with balsa wood, cardboard, and just things from your recycle bin. So I found this kitty litter bin and I think it's going to make a really great interior of our spaceship. It's got these nice rounded walls that will complement the design of the spaceship. Now I just got to figure out how to cut this thing in half. I tried a couple of different saws and I think that this one seems to be working. And it did the trick. 3D printer is still going. Let's cut out a hole for the window. I found this oscillating saw worked a little bit better, especially for these detailed cuts. But all the edges were still pretty rough, so we'll just have to sand that down a little. And the window and console are ready to go. Turned out pretty good and fits like a charm. I've designed these panels to match the texture of our UFO table, and it's pretty close to the fabric that I used there. I'm gonna make these side panels. First, I'll use some cardboard to figure out the shape. But then I'm gonna transfer that and cut them out of some old scrap aluminum. I find that when you score it first, you get a nice, crisp, clean bend. Alright, the panels are done. Let's get some more stuff going on in the 3D printer. This one's going to take a while. To glue these panels to the aluminum, I used some super glue along with some hot glue. I want to make one more little panel for the middle. This one's going to be a little bit different and I want to add some rivets. So I'm going to use this old doll punch to make some dents. Only 13 hours left on the ceiling brackets. In the meantime, let's prep some other stuff. I'm going to use this old paint stick to create a couple of trim pieces. The ceiling brackets are done, so I think we're ready for some paint. If 
First I painted everything with a couple of coats of gray for a base coat. Then I went ahead and added some of this copper for some of the pieces. Now I know I said I was going to build this with things I could find around the house, but I just couldn't resist adding some LEDs. I like to solder everything together just to make sure we got a nice good connection. And a little heat shrink. Let's plug this in and see if I did it right. And we have light. I also decided to use some of these multicolor LED strips. Tack that in with a little bit of hot glue. And we have light. For the floor, I'm just using a piece of masonite with another base coat of gray. And I'll go back and add a little bit of silver later. All right, let's glue the panels together. Now to mount the LEDs, I just use a couple pieces of scrap cardboard. Cut up these trim pieces. Stick them on with a little hot glue. I'm gonna tack this on. I like to just use a little bit of hot glue just in case I need to pry something apart later. All right, it's looking pretty sweet. Here's that dusting of metallic on the floor. Now here's the ceiling brackets. I'm putting a little bit of LEDs in there too as I assemble it. All right, that's working. To make sure that we've got the ceiling bracket nice and secure, I'm gonna drill a couple of holes in there just for the hot glue to have something to grab onto. All right, now it's time to put this thing together. Figure out all this wiring. Few minor tweaks and nice. I can't wait to see how this looks on our next video. All right, this thing is finally finished. Before we wrap up the video though, I wanted to share a couple of things for anybody who might be thinking about building their own unique set and miniature. Uh, if you're not interested in that, I totally understand if you want to click off here, but please like and subscribe and also let me know in the comment section if there's anything that you'd like to know more about if you have questions about this project or if there's something else you'd like to see me cover in our Jancer Studios channel. This is the channel where we kind of cover all the things that we do behind the scenes here at Jancer Studios. We also have another channel called Art on Earth. And on that channel, we explore why art is important on our planet. So please make sure you check that out. We could use a few more subscribers over there. All right, so you may have noticed in the video that I was also working on the back half of the spacecraft at the same time. I decided not to include all those clips in the video because it was just getting a little bit too long, but I wanted to show how you can use repurposed objects. The back door here, this archway, this is actually an old carryout container. Another good thing to keep in mind whenever you're building a set, whether it's full scale or in miniature, is to keep things flexible. The more things that you can move around in the set, the more you'll be able to cheat the composition. And also, if you can pull out walls to change the lighting, that's the one thing I wish I could do a little bit differently in this, is just pull out some sections so that way I could get a little bit different light in there. But I'll work with what I got here. But if you're building a set, keep that in mind. The more things that you can move, the better it's going to be in the long run. And the last thing to keep in mind is that projects like this, they take a long time. This took me over a month, but it was totally worth it because now we have this set that kind of works with the whole aesthetic of our show and it's totally unique. No one else will have a set like this in the world or in the universe. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. We'll see you in the next video.